blowpipe weapons by paul fountain this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org in certain kinds of mechanical skill savage sometimes far excel civilized men not because they have greater ability but owing to the perfectness of long practice the skill of our english ancestors with the bow now seems to us their descendants who have long since lost that skill to be almost incredible so it is also with the blowpipe my relation in a recent work of the marvellous skill of the guianan indians with that weapon has not altogether escaped criticism i propose therefore to describe this singular instrument and give some incidents of its use among those people waterton has given such an excellent description of the blowpipe that practically i cannot add much to it there are two kinds of blowpipes in use among the indians the first called the pukuna is made of the ura reed this remarkable reed is only found on the orinoco river and there only at certain spots a fact which does not seem to have been known to waterton for he does not name either the reed or the place of its growth the ura grows to the height of at least thirty feet and the basal joint of which the blowpipe is made is fourteen or fifteen feet long straight as an arrow and without a knot the inside of the reed is as smooth as glass hence the facility with which the dart traverses it very little of the reed is cut away so that the pipe is about twelve feet long and so strong that when held horizontally there is not the least bend in it the reed having been carefully selected cut and prepared is enclosed in a small thin palm trunk which is split open for the purpose scraped thin as a wafer and then rejoined with the reed in the centre this palm for length straightness and lightness is as remarkable as the reed the whole pipe when finished never weighs more than a pound and a half or a pound and three quarters both the mouth or muzzle and the breech are bell-mouthed the bell pieces being fixed on there are front and back sights the latter formed of the curved teeth of the dasyproctor acuchi a species of rodent somewhat larger in size than a wild rabbit two of the incisors of this animal are fixed on the breech of the pipe by means of wax the teeth being placed parallel to each other and very close together the sight is taken between them sometimes the foresight is made in the same way but it more often consists of the single sharp tooth of a fish it is placed about a foot back from the muzzle the back sight being affixed four feet along the tube so that it is a considerable distance from the eye when aiming the missile used with this tube is usually misnamed an arrow it is really a dart scarcely bigger than a large darning needle and with a point quite as fine the dart is made of the rib of the kukuit palm leaf and is so heavy that it will sink in water it is about seven inches in length not thicker than a large needle and the usual number that an indian carries with him when shooting is from three hundred and fifty to five hundred ready poisoned but not prepared with the necessary cotton plugs these darts are strung together something like the reeds on which soft cheeses are placed and then rolled on a stick and carried in a quiver points upmost it being requisite to protect them from every chance of being broken or dulled to protect the hand when handling them the top of the stick is furnished with a small wheel-like shield the fine points are given to the darts by means of the teeth of the devil fish serosalmus puria and the cotton with which they are plugged before use is found growing wild it is bound to the base of the dart with thread made of silk grass this thread with wax obtained from several trees being largely used also in making the blowpipe 
the skill used in binding the plug of cotton to the dart must be great or it will not fly true and far when shot the indian never carries more than five or six ready plugged and when these are lost he must draw others from the quiver and plug them he always tries them repeatedly before use and perhaps never succeeds in getting one to fly perfectly true but if it is only a few inches out of flight like a rifleman in aiming he makes allowance for this inaccuracy and it proves to be of little moment the distance to and accuracy with which these darts are shot are simply wonderful though the darts do not strike with any great force the death of the game is occasioned not by the impact but by the poison with which the dart is tipped this poison lodges in a tiny groove cut or rather scratched in the dart for the purpose of affording it a lodgment and also in the notch cut near the tip so finely pointed is the dart that it will penetrate the flesh on a mere touch and if any animal such as a monkey irritated by the prick endeavours to draw it from the wound it breaks at the notch and leaves the fatal jag behind there is a knack in blowing the darts from the pipe i have succeeded in propelling them about a hundred yards and i have never seen a european send them farther but the indians puff them double that distance and at a hundred to a hundred and fifty yards will hit a mark only a few inches square i have seen native marksmen who could hit parrots and toucans at the last distance once in two or three shots remarkable as this statement may seem to persons unacquainted with the steady hand and sure eye of these men it is in no wise an exaggeration when a dart has been shot if it misses its mark the indian takes great pains to find it on account of the danger it is to persons walking near the spot for if trodden on it is likely to be as fatal as the bite of the most venomous snake i have formed the opinion that the wurali poison used to tip the darts owes its great virulence to the venom of a snake which i think is mixed with it but i need not discuss that matter here although it is so light the blowpipe is a clumsy weapon to handle on account of its great length and it is easily damaged the slightest wrench or knock renders it useless and the indian is most careful to avoid accidents of this kind he carries the tube in a vertical position never leans it against a tree or places it on the ground without being sure that it will lie perfectly flat and when it is not in use it is suspended in an upright position to the bough of a tree or to a post erected near the hut for the purpose the darts must fit the tube closely enough to resist the passage of the tiniest stream of air and yet so loosely as to traverse it easily and the attaching of the cotton plugs is a troublesome business which often occupies the indian for hours at a sitting when the dart is placed in the tube it is pushed up with a small stick a distance of about fourteen inches from the mouthpiece at this distance from the mouth the greatest force of the breath is obtained but it is a matter of much practice to manage the breath properly a steady somewhat prolonged puff has more effect than a short sharp one at what period these blowpipes came into use it is now impossible to learn there is no reference to them in the works of the old spanish writers and they were never used by other indians than a few guianan tribes nor were they ever employed much in war the weapon being too long clumsy and easily damaged for use in the rough work of warfare there is another kind of blowpipe used for shooting deer peccaries and larger animals this weapon made of a small palm trunk is much shorter and thicker than the ordinary blowpipe and does not carry the dart more than a hundred yards the darts for this tube are much heavier than those for the longer weapon and poisoned arrows and spears are also used by hand 
the only other uncivilized nations that i can find ever used weapons of the kind just described are the javanese and some other tribes of the islands of the indian ocean and the japanese the former used a blowpipe called a sun pitten poisoned arrows were blown from it but it was altogether an inferior weapon to the guianan blowpipe the japanese peasantry use a small blowpipe about forty inches long to shoot small birds the darts are not poisoned and the force of impact is so slight that only very small birds such as sparrows and finches can be killed the guianan blowpipe is an ingenious and for its purpose a powerful weapon which is more than can be said for either the javanese or japanese blowpipe but it is extraordinary that such a weapon seems to have been employed only by nations living so wide apart on the earth's surface the effect of the guianan poison dart is to cause immediate paralysis however slight the wound inflicted so that the victim never escapes end of blowpipe weapons by paul fountain